Uh, I've had conversations with Walt Rogers. I'm gonna be very frank, I don't wanna give you the generic question, I wanna give you the hard hitting one. You realize by supporting school vouchers, it's not just for Christian schools. I wanna know from each one of you, would you support satanic private schools? Also, would you support Muslim private schools that may end up teaching Sharia law? Anybody wanna go first? And I agree, the goal, the, the goal is to allow parents to have choice. So I don't think we want to get into the business of deciding what that choice would be. The parents should have choices, and, and there should be other opportunities. I think as we look at the transportation issues, some of the other issues surrounding schools, parents do want choices. But we absolutely need to fund the public schools. You can't substitute one for the other. To my knowledge, there's not even a bill in the House that deals with Savings so. Right, but I want to know if the day comes and private schools become something that the public taxpayer dollars go to, would you support private schools that are non-Christian, that may end up being satanic or Muslim? Yeah, I, I, was, I would follow with what the speaker had for a response, and I think when we're looking at this issue, two, number one, we have to remember, and this is probably for a whole, there's every year there's bills that are filed that bring up conversation, and whether it's in its infancy or it's the seventh time that it's been introduced. So I think that just because you know there there was a bill filed that would move down the road of using for ESAs, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the bill is being filed because the expectation is the final product. Should the ESAs be part of the conversation? Absolutely, they should be part of the conversation. But we're in a financial situation where it would be at the expense of our public schools. So it makes it very difficult for us to really have a serious conversation about that right now. So th that's my assessment of that issue. I've long believed that uh, school choice is uh, important for parents and our students across the state. And we shouldn't be putting parameters around that we have choice. That is what it is. Um, I think it's also important to point out that where we hear the most requests for giving parents and students the most, uh, more choice is in a lot of our urban centers and in areas where we have schools that are failing their students and, and student achievement. And they want to be able to send their students to a high quality school that only the rich in the community are currently able to afford. That's really what we hear and that's what people are calling for is they want that ability to make a decision to send their kids, their poor kids, to one of the better schools for a better education. I think we should just fund all schools appropriately so that every child, no matter where they live, has the same opportunity for quality education, not just the rich kids. Well, most of our schools are doing very well, and parents are very happy with it and have no desire to send their students to another, uh, any other school. So, and, and the legislation would never mandate such a thing. And just a follow-up, if that school choice or ESAs goes into the homeschooling arena, do you support increasing the oversight uh, for homeschooling, especially when public taxpayer dollars are included in that? Accountability is always important. And I, Iowa legislature has all, had a long history of making sure that we have accountability in our education system. Anybody else with homeschooling? When with, with that, that, dollars, that, that girl in Des Moines died, that they found her in the, in the diapers, and the legislature is all Natalie up in arms, Penn. huh? Natalie mm -hmm. Yeah, so the legislature is all up in arms and grilling DHS because they didn't do their job. Do you look in the mirror for the wide loophole you made for homeschoolers? No and look at accountability there? 